Angela Kegler, and I'm going to be the instructor for your upcoming course. Allow me to introduce myself. I've been teaching in both the collegiate and corporate environment for over a decade now. I have a PhD in organizational development, which gives me the opportunity to have the academic experience in learning the tools that you need to learn, and also the experience or the practitioner side where I've had to employ these tools in the workplace. Like you, I've also sat in the seats and had to learn these skills in such a fashion that I can turn around and teach them to you. I hope that you enjoy my teaching style and the content that I have to deliver for you. Happy learning. Time management is defined as the process of strategically managing time. When we think about time management, what we want to ask ourselves, are we trying to manage our time or are we managing habits? When we manage our time, we have to consider the average workday. The average workday only has eight hours. That boils down to 480 minutes or 28,880 seconds. How do you spend your hours, your minutes, and your seconds? What does your manager want you to spend your time on? Let's take a look at this chart. This chart will walk you through the steps of managing your time. Let's first look at step one. The action in step one is that you should define the dreams that you hope to achieve and the regrets you have about accomplishments you have not made. From there, you can go into step two, which is articulating the goals that you want to establish for yourself. When you articulate the goals, you want to identify exactly what is it that you want to succeed in. What do you want to achieve? From there, you can go to step three. You have to be able to look and analyze your current energy distribution patterns. How do you spend your energy, which is number four? Identifying how you currently spend your time and where you contribute or distribute that energy. In step five, you will assess your current tasks and your daily workload, understanding not only where you are currently spending your time, but then what tasks you have to accomplish. This allows you to move into step six. In step six, you identify how you like to work. We are much more effective in doing the things that we like to do in the ways that we like to do them, which then allows you to move into step seven, by identifying your personal strengths. Again, knowing how you like to work helps you to identify what your personal strengths are. In step eight, you will reduce factors that may be distracting, all of those items that might be preventing you from utilizing and distributing your energy appropriately and getting things accomplished, those current tasks in your daily workload. From there, we'll move into step nine, where you can assemble your time management tools, tools that we'll talk about shortly, using those tools that will work best for you in the ways that you like to work. And finally, step 10 is to build an action plan for time management, looking at how you currently spend your time, what your current tasks in your workload is, understanding how you like to work and your personal strengths, and then putting a plan together to eliminate those items that are distracting and put together the tools and put them into practice so that you can manage your time in the most effective manner. Next, let's look at what a dream is. A dream is a personal, hopeful vision for your future. With our dreams, we have to be able to define them. Often our dreams are intangible. It's hard to describe what they are. But if you can describe your dreams in one, two, three, or even four sentences, that will help you to condense your dreams into tangible action items. To define your dreams, consider an ultimate or ambitious achievement you'd like to make. Identify what you'd like to improve upon in your personal life. You may be considering long-term financial achievements that you'd like to make. Identify what you hope to achieve professionally, thinking about all of the things in both your personal and professional life. Consider the milestones you'd like to reach in your career. Are there things in your career or places or positions in your career that you'd like to achieve? You may also consider small improvements or changes you'd like to realize. 
and make sure that those dreams are possible and within your control. Let's take a look at goals. A goal is an achievement or an accomplishment that you are determined to reach in the future. Goals should be SMART. SMART is an acronym. Let's talk about what SMART means. First, specific. Your goals should be very specific. Second, they should be measurable, meaning that you should be able to measure them and have indicators of progress along the way. You'll know when they are achieved. A stands for achievable. A SMART goal is something that you can achieve, not something you can't. R stands for relevant. It should be relevant to what you're trying to accomplish. And finally, it should be timely or time-bound, meaning that it would have a deadline in when you want to accomplish it. So if goals are SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely, it's an achievement or an accomplishment that you will most likely achieve sometime in the future. Let's take a look at guidelines for articulating your goals. First of all, you should always include a time frame for completion. You should be as specific as you possibly can. Review your descriptions of your dreams, consider your dreams, and determine which of these will become the basis for your goals. You should also consider the descriptions of your regrets. What are things that you wish you had accomplished? From there, you should describe a goal that you expect to reach in the coming weeks or months. This will help you to identify exactly what you want to accomplish, and it will set your sights on those goals in the coming weeks or months in the future. Describe a goal you expect to reach, not just what you want to reach, but expect to reach in the coming years. This could be the milestones in your career that you wish to accomplish. Make sure that your goals are challenging but achievable. Stretch yourself. Go for something bigger and better. And finally, describe your goals in one or two sentences. These would be a few sentences that you would be able to say to somebody else in describing what it is that you wish to accomplish, whether it be in the coming weeks, months, or years, being able to articulate it in a way that others can understand and you can set your sights on is the best way to articulate your goals. You've heard me use the word regret. A regret is the disappointment as a result of missed opportunities or unfulfilled potential. Regret is not necessarily a negative thing. Regret can be something that inspires us to achieve more. It allows us to look at something that we didn't accomplish, something that was unfulfilled, and look towards the future from that regret to then seek out fulfilling that potential or seeking out that potential in the future. Let's look at some guidelines for identifying what our regrets are. Here we would identify something that's important to you that you wish you had done or had not done. This might be where you identify something that causes you minor annoyance and disappointment. Regrets could be identifying something that bothers you personally. You should make sure that the regret relates to the choices within your control. If it's something outside of your control, let it go. Now if you're having difficulty thinking of something that's a relevant regret, complete the sentence I wish that five years ago I had what? That will help you to identify what a regret is in your life. Again, this regret is not necessarily negative, it's just a missed opportunity. Try to be as specific and describe your regrets in a few sentences. By doing that, it'll help you to identify, here's what I wish I had done, and then you can set your sights on fulfilling that potential or seeking out that opportunity to fill the gap and eliminate the regret from your past.